Hey guys, uh, Tim at CRE here in San Diego, uh, working on a Saturday with Scotty, doing what uh, we do uh, the very best in this whole wide zip code. So we're working on 944s, of course, and uh, I want to show you a quick uh, way to um, test your oil cooler. We've got what looks like an oil cooler seal failure. A lot of times this uh, failure is misdiagnosed as a head gasket, and there's only one small port uh, in the cylinder head that can leak oil into the coolant and that's the passage with a check valve that goes up from the cylinder head up to the cam housing not in a 944 it's really rare to get a, a head gasket failure to make an oil cooler seal symptom so and we're talking about oil in the coolant what we call milkshake uh, don't buy a 944 without pulling the dipstick and seeing if it's got milkshake or the same thing with the coolant expansion tank cap uh, open that thing up and if it's had uh, uh, oil cooler seal failures then it will uh, it, it'll show itself because the oil will float on top of the coolant. There's that. Okay, so here is a, an oil cooler housing. Um, on the 944s, this came. I've talked to it about it a couple times before in my other videos. Um, this is a 5R housing. Uh, there's also a 6R update, and the only way it differs is in the machining in this little area right here. It's either flat or it's raised. And on the 6Rs, there's an additional alignment procedure for the oil cooler itself. So we know that these uh, the seals, the green seals around these two uh, um, ports right here uh, can fail. They usually get skinnier and skinnier and shrink. And then after a while, uh, because that's what's preventing the um, oil through this passage bleeding into a, a jacket of water, coolant surrounding it, this is what fails right here. And it starts uh, putting the pressure out and the oil gets into the coolant. So this oil cooler sits inside this housing. Come sa. Just like that and so like I said for a 5R you can put it in with a little black black door base right here a 6R there's an alignment procedure to make sure this cooler sits square in here so you get the best chance of having these uh, the, the green o-rings that'll go on here uh, make their best seal for the most amount of years and miles okay so in addition to those seals that uh, usually what goes bad we need to test the oil cooler itself before we put that dang thing back in there so I've come up with this little rig um, and, and a, a coolant thing. It, it's a precisely calibrated uh, device here. You can see the fill line right there. So that, that gets me deep enough in the water to submerge the cooler completely, but not, but not so deep as, a, as to make it overflow is the goal. So here's an old, uh, um, looks like a late model um, um, heater core hose, like from the uh, back of the engine, of uh, the heater control valve, sorry, to the uh, firewall. All right, so I put this on one end, get it up, get it up vertical, like that. And uh, you know, a good point too to make your lives easier. I don't know if you want to spend the money tooling up, but the tool that I'm using right now is a flexible nut driver. Instead of uh, struggling with uh, staying on a hose clamp with a straight slot like this, you get these these flexible uh, drivers right here. It's 65 bucks from my Matco tool guy, but uh, it's you don't slip off. And, and because they're flexible, I can use these things to get up under an intake manifold, you know, wherever I need to get. And it's it's one to one, so I, li I like it a lot. I could even torque down hose clamps. So I got this guy here, that should be adequate. Here's the other cap on the other end. So what we're gonna do is make an airtight seal on this thing and then submerge it in the secret sauce water and this is a tight fit but it will go most of the way and there you go because we don't want to get water inside of our oil cooler brake cleaner is all right you can blast that out and uh we just don't want water in there i'm going to expand this clamp a little bit Crank this down. And that should be good. So we're gonna put this guy underwater and get all the air bubbles out of it. I'm just gonna shake it a bit to get any loose bubbles out so we don't get fooled by that. I'm gonna spin this around so it's oriented toward me. And let's see. This can be tricky because you don't wanna blast too much air. I've got 90 pounds on this compressor line here and we don't want to blast too much and just knock the caps off so what i try to do i've got a, i've got this cap on here and it is slit in an x pattern that allows me to 
that allows me to blow right through this thing. So I just push in a little bit like that and I can do it. But I want to get the airflow established first because you don't need too much. And then let's see if I can do this without popping this thing, popping my tester apart. Okay, so the hose is, the hose is flexing. Yeah, that hose is flexing. I can see I'm getting pressure in the system, but I don't see any bubbles. So again, I don't see any bubbles coming out of that oil cooler. Yeah, but you can see the whole thing flexing. So I'm getting good pressure here. That's nice. That's about a $400 savings right there for the customer because it looks like his oil cooler is good. So quick little uh, a cheap test you can do to, to test your oil cooler because it'd be foolish to not test this thing uh, you know, before putting it back in if you had oil cooler seals. You gotta make sure the seals are good and the oil cooler itself. So we'll let this thing uh, dry out now and blast it out with uh, some air pressure. And because I didn't get any water inside of it, it should be ready to install. Just do your alignment and the install procedure and there you go, there's your rig for testing a Porsche 944 oil cooler. See ya.